Yo, 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 it's your boy, Professor Pippi, Pippi, be the I traded Asian. Um, coming to you now with the weekend analysis. A little late on the get off on the video. Been out and about living life and doing things, so I had to get to it when I can get to it. But hurts already identified and marked up, but as far as getting the, the voiceover video out. Um, overall, looking at AU bullishly, um, we're currently pushing in two supply that uh push us to the downside here on the daily time frame. And we are waiting for a reaction from this level right up here. Either we're going to come down and break structure or we're going to continue to go bullish and go higher, higher, and higher, low. <clears throat> what we can see on the hourly is price action is pushing bullish. And since about last Thursday and Friday, we started to kind of consolidate right up in here in this area. So um, four hour um, higher, low pushes into the higher highs on a four hour time frame, identifying the black. So what we're looking for first is to see how price action reacts from this 15 minute level here. If we break through there, potentially, we could see lower lows and lower highs coming from that area slash level. And pretty much you just, you know, let price action do its thing and potentially catch it on the um, um, lower high right here. If price action is going to pull back or if we're going to push above that uh, four hour resistance um, and then continue bullish. Uh, what I got right here, weekly, daily, forage, bullish, four hour range has created a higher high and has pushed deeply into previous supply. If price action breaks one day support, could see bearish price action back to the four hour support. Uh, one hour funky situation, kind of consolidation, bearish price action overall. So, looking at it from the daily, uh, we have just been pushing bullish since October. So, price ain't just doing what it's doing, higher highs and higher lows. Um, ultimately, from the daily time frame, we do kind of look a little bit extended and look like we do want to do uh, price action does look like we want to pull back a little bit. So, We'll be looking for that this week. We do got NFP on Friday. So if the market, whatever market you're following, your charts start to consolidate at the beginning of this week, then, well, if you follow the charts long enough, you know, potentially that could just be the consolidation leading to the big news at the end of the week. And let me make sure I ain't giving out no false information. Let us find out real quick. <clears throat> but uh, one of the things I did notice last week as I was doing the playback of my video that I put out was, um, it seemed a bit confusing, even when I watched it, knowing what I was talking about. So, um, this week, what I want to do is kind of do more of a broad perspective, um, especially on the weekend analysis and just kind of give a general idea and thought of where we think the market is going to go versus, you know, trying to zoom in so far, uh, too far in the lower time frames and try to predict. So I think it'd be better, especially with the, um, potential news coming up this week to look at it from a broader perspective and just kind of see, okay, well, if we're making higher highs and higher lows on the four hour chart of AUD USD, um, and we potentially want to take buys, what do we generally want to get in from? So theoretically, uh, depending on how price action reacts from this area right here, uh, we naturally would like to see a retracement of some sort, lower lows and lower highs on this four hour time frame, um, to then potentially get in for a, uh, discounted price versus price action being way up here. So um, that's what I'll be looking for as the week comes open, knowing, like I said, on the back end that uh, NFP is on uh, Friday and then just, you know, trending like that. Pushing over to GJ. Go, GJ. What's going on in that thing? So um, we are identifying bearishly. Oh, wait, hold on. No, I'll be identifying bullishly. Um, daily time frame. This being a um, higher low that pushed and gave you a high high price action overall retracing back down. Um, if we start to break, you know, this four hour support that we created right here back over in the, uh, what is that, early January? Yeah, early January. And then potentially we could see more bearish price action on the GBP, JPY. But so far from the four hourly time frame in, um, we were somewhat kind of stuck within this four hourly range from the high to the low. We haven't really broken the highs or broken the lows. So Right now, kind of just considered to be somewhat consolidative up in this area right here. Um, daily has a bullish range, currently retracing the structure. 4H currently consolidating uh, most recent impulse with bullish. If we get a bearish one hour break, we could see bearish price action to the four hour supply or support. Um, overall, probably best to wait for four hour consolidation break to avoid the trap. So, probably just gonna uh, take. GG out there realistic this week until we see 
price action either start to break structure to the downside or come up and start to break um, above continuation buy area 162, 345. Um, ultimately, I don't know what I would like this to do. Because if it breaks above, you know, naturally we're going to wait for the break and retest. But depending on, especially GJ, and like I said, we had NFP coming this week, but especially GJ, GJ, when it likes to push, sometimes it just goes. So if we break above, it could just go and fill that there. But yeah, overall, that's what I'm looking at on GJ. Kind of stuck in the range right up in here. So waiting to see some type of price action to kind of give and uh, identify and show where the market wants to go. Uh, pushing over to UK. UK, I thought overall was bearish. Uh, currently bearish on the daily four hour and one hour. One thing that stand out this week, oh, one thing, one thing that stand out um, that I identified was a weekly order block to the downside, right down here in the purple. I don't really trade based off order blocks, but as you look at the weekly chart, that's just the way it looks. So that's just the way I took the note. Uh, yeah. Right up here. So the identify one block potentially could retest back into here, especially since this level didn't really touch all the way down into this area. Let me bring the analysis back. We got the equal lows right there. So we could see price action dip down one more time back into this area here. And this is on the daily time frame too. So if we see some rejections within this area right up in here. Potentially, we could see price action roll over on the lower time frame, specifically probably the four hour. Watch it start to break structures back to the top side and then see if it wants to push bullish. Otherwise, it's off to the races, to the downside. So definitely lower high. Um, let me see. We saw for the daily four hours of poison. Oh yeah, so we definitely could continue to go bearish at the market open. We already open right now. So I'll be waiting to see. If we close back above here, then I'd like to try to frame some buys either back into this uh, four-hour um, high area or even back up into supply where price actually came back from, but ultimately bearish on United States or U USDK. So ultimately right now, kind of looking like uh, USD weakness maybe. Can you, yeah, USDK, see what UJ hitting for. E Based off the weekly slash monthly price action, still has a hit the down socket. Let me see continuation shorts to 18. We don't need. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ultimately bearish, higher time frames, weekly, monthly, daily, daily. Um, kind of stuck within a little range right here within on the, on the hourly, 15 minute. We could break below this area here, 129.056, and look for them continuation shorts. Uh, I don't really see anything significant besides this little area right here. So if price action comes back down, it doesn't break these lows. Definitely, ultimately, could be framing long, turn around within the market. <clears throat> but that would indicate potentially some USD strength potentially picking back up within the market. So we could see that based off of that, uh, that daily supportive area where price action has reacted. Try to, you know, once we hit down in this area right over here, try to get back up but want enough to get above there and then now it's just fizzling out so if these lows right here stay intact then we could get back bullish but if that low breaks then it'll probably be all to the races and ultimately we'll catch it for the retest for the bearish continuation shorts around that 127.208 so that's what we'll be looking for long term long term on UJ if it breaks bearish over the GU <clears throat> Daily, deep into the supply. Could continue on a burst already grabbed. Yep, right over here. Push the ball, already grabbed. Came down, did break structure. Ooh, this is, let me, yeah, did, did break structure on the hourly. Didn't break the significant low of the four hour chart coming from down here. So, uh, yeah, we potentially could come back down, sweep some liquidity. These equal lows right up here and then scoop back to the top side. But ultimately, I do think, uh, GU is kind of identifying some of that USD weakness as well. So uh, we've been pushing bullies since uh, late January. If we do get a retracement, yeah, we can see how we react once uh, we 
hit this one hour support area. If we break through then potentially definitely could be coming back down to the daily support. So just something to be looking at. Um, I don't really see any signs point to USD strength. So uh, that would probably be a sit back and wait for an NFP type of thing to see how that reacts and then get busy, get funky on this pair uh, next week. Over to gold, I did not reanalyze gold. Just was looking at it from afar and it's just like, kind of see how price action is reacting. <clears throat> as it pushes up into a level to the left side. Ultimately, these levels to the left don't hold too much stock. I'll just look at how price action reacts as it pushes into that level. So this only relates for me as in when I zoom back in to uh, price action like this, and I'm looking at how price action, I know, like I said, looking left, it's pushing it to that area. So now I'm looking for is price action breaking structure as it's pushing into that level to the left. And if it's not, then Ultimately, price action potentially could just keep going bullish. Hold on one second. But um, yeah, so ultimately, as we are pushing into that level from the left side, how it relates to my trading is once we push into that level, do we break structure on the way back down to kind of show that, you know, price potentially could turn around from that level? And if it doesn't, then ultimately, you know, as you zoom it back out, you kind of line up and do this and look at it the same, same scenario. You see like, okay, well, price action was right here when we push bullish and then it rolled over bearish. So as we come across, we look at the reaction from that level. And when we get the reaction, if it comes down and starts breaking structure, where the price action is coming from, then potentially we could be getting ready to go back bearish. But if it doesn't, then, you know, as you can see with the result, as we continue to go bullish. All right. So, yeah. Um, so what we see is price action just continues to go bullish. So like I said, price action, when we we're pushing into that level, we aren't really breaking significant structure of where price action is coming from as far as making higher highs and higher lows. So that's, you know, when you start to identify, you have to be able to identify which levels are significant for you in the market that tells you certain things that goes on. And, you know, uh, from a higher time frame to a lower time frame, I analyze based off of kind of like supply and demand support resistance all combined into one, and then just based off of how price action is moving within the market. <clears throat> but um, overall, still looking for that level on gold to get hit at 1973. Been holding this right here for uh, since January 23rd. Um, and yeah, but I ultimately feel like this thing could pull back drastically and do something funky. <clears throat> yeah, so we just have to see how price action plays out. Like I said, the market has opened kind of late on the analysis. Um, this right here is was the analysis I had from a couple of weeks on uh, weeks ago on uh, NU kind of moves the same as AU. Um, so I really don't trade NU at all. I just really look at it as far as correlation of pairs and it's, uh, to uh, let me see. I'm not to the side by side, but. Mm -hmm. Freak out. Why does it keep doing that? <clears throat> but anyway, I was trying to put side by side. Um, I could overlap them, but it's just been weird. We're going to put it back. Oh, wait, there we go. All right. So generally, as AU makes higher highs and higher lows, Go out to the hourly. Yep. 
Oh, there's some fucking candles. I don't know where the color came from. But, um, yeah, ultimately, they sort of moved the same as far as price action going up and coming back down, respecting certain levels and um, how it continues to break through certain structures. Right here, um, AU, we're struggling back in over here. And, you know, we finally pushed through uh, in you. Looks like it's still respecting that area if we're still, you know, following and tracking it like this here. And then this move here. And then as it pushes up, this move here. With this move here. And then pulls back same way. So kind of travels in somewhat in the same pattern, way of movement like. So it's just watching the charts over so long, you start to notice those similarities. And then, uh, yeah, you just kind of find what works for you. But uh, this is what works for me. This is how I get active. This is how I'm about to smash up some shit this week. Um, yeah, especially if we start breaking out some of these, some of these ranges right here. <clears throat> I would take a lower high to uh, pull back down here. So on that retracement. Well, ultimately, it is bullish. So the best bullish scenario is what's going to take us to the promised land. Just play with the trend. Trend can be your friend if you know what the trend at. But if that thing get ready to reverse, you can get your ass smack. Um, yeah. So first area I'll definitely be paying attention to is when price action gets back down here on AU. Uh, at 7, 70, I'd say about 7,700 area. You know, see what it's doing when it get down there. But overall, that's all I got for this one. Um, trying to go catch the rest of these football games. Um. I think 49ers just got smacked, but uh, that's all I got for this one. Like and subscribe. I let you boy hit them comments for me. I'm out. Hey. Hey. Uh, uh. Hey.